Hello and welcome back to my studio. I want to do a demo and review of this manual sharpener. If you're an artist you'll always be looking for the perfect sharpener and they're honestly not easy to find. Forums and Facebook groups are full of reviews and to some extent it's about personal choice but on the other hand a major consideration is what kind of pencils you need sharpening. So I'm going to experiment with a variety of pencils from wax and oil based as well as thick and thin pencils to see how it holds up. So according to the website this sharpener is great for graphite, watercolour, charcoal, coloured pencils with soft leads and they mention specific brands such as Prismacolor, Derwent, Staedtler and the Conte à Paris 8mm pencils. That's a pretty thick pencil. So the sharpener itself is really very nice. It has a nice glossy feel to it. It's super lightweight. It came in this nice little box. It has a very small user manual, a little business card and this little thing in here that looks like um, an Allen wrench and I don't know what that's for but I can only imagine it's for if a pencil lead gets stuck and you have to fish it out. Anyway, um, it's a pretty simple design and there are two areas here for um, basically sharpening so you can either sharpen to a fine point or a more blunt point and in order to do that you just turn the device, this little knob here, one way or the other way. I'm going to keep mine at the sharp point but I'll also show you a blunt point on one of the pencils and it's a hand crank so there's, um, there's no uh, battery or there's no uh, need to plug in and it has a helical blade inside so if we take out the helical blade um, you can see it and so how this works is the pencil remains stationary while the crank moves and the spiral grinds against the sharpener shaving the wood pencil and as a result you get a longer and a sharper point and AFMAT claim that you can get 3000 uses for this before the blade needs replacing. So I got mine from Amazon and it was $15 and some change. Uh, you can't get the replacements from Amazon but you can get them from the website and they're just a little over $8. Now of course I don't know if this is going to hold up to 3000 uses because I've never used it before. But they claim that it is for pencils ranging from 8 to 20 millimeters in size. So let's give this a go. So here are the pencils that I'm going to use. I'm going to use uh, a Prismacolor Premier. This is a very popular brand of waxed based pencil that lots of people who do um, who, who use colored pencils will use it and this is a Faber-Castell Polychromos this is an oil based pencil this one I thought I'd use it is a another Prismacolor it's a Prismacolor very thin and this one has a harder lead and I thought I'd give this one a go because it's never been sharpened before this one broke off a long time ago it's a water soluble pencil and then I thought I'd try a thicker one. This is a Derwent pastel pencil, the Chinese white, which is a popular one if you like using charcoal pencils and the mid-tone grey papers or the black papers. And then this is just a drawing pencil, an HB. And then I'm going to try that Conte à Paris one that apparently they say it will sharpen. And just to let you know, that the sharpener that I have been using, the Exacto School Pro, broke this pencil lead twice yesterday. So I have been recommending that sharpener, but I'm going to tell you now, the Conte Apuri pencils will not sharpen in the Exacto School Pro. So I'm really hoping that this is going to work with the AFMAT. Then if you like 
to use pastel pencils, a popular brand is the Stabilo Carbothello pencil. So I'm going to pop that in and see if that sharpens. And also another brand of soft pastel pencil, the Koei Noor. And finally, I use this General's 558 charcoal pencil. It's really great for highlights. And I thought I would use this one because it's very short. So I wanted to see if it's actually going to to fit in. I usually use it uh, with one of these pencil extenders, but I thought I would just try a shorter pencil and that way I can give you a thorough review. So according to the instructions, what you do is very simple. I'm putting the Prismacolor one in. Now you put it in until it stops, then you hold the top and then you just Turn the handle. Now, after a while, apparently you're not going to hear any more grinding when the pencil is sharp. And in order to remove the pencil, you give it a, an anti-clockwise turn. Well, that's a pretty nice sharp point, I would say. The, uh, the housing in here is very large for the shavings and it removes fairly easily. And then once you pull it out completely, you'll notice that there's a piece of sandpaper here. So if you like your pencils really, really sharp, you can use this little piece of sandpaper in here. Whether you will want to pull all of that out and get your workspace full of shavings, well, that's up to you. But um, if I wanted mine really sharp, I probably wouldn't pull that out and I'd probably use one of these little sandpaper pads. So let's carry on going with a couple of um, other pencils. So the next one that I'm trying is the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. So I'm going to put it in and put it in until it stops. Hold that down and start cranking. And now I can feel that there's no more resistance, so I'm going to go anti-clockwise so that I can pull the pencil out. Wow, well, that's pretty amazing. Now I haven't in the past really felt the need to use super sharp pencils. I think the main consideration though is if you're going to use a sharpener, be consistent with your sharpener because what really wastes the lead is reshaping them all the time. So if I like this sharpener, this is probably the only sharpener that I'll use. So continuing on with a pencil that hasn't been sharpened before, and you always want to make sure when you have a pencil that hasn't been sharpened before that you put it in the right way. I want to know that this is a golden rod color. So I'm going to put the lead in this way. And the resistance has reached its, um, it reaches where it needs to go. And this is a lovely, super fine point as well. So how does a water soluble pencil work? Don't forget to turn that anti or counterclockwise. That's a really nice point too. Now, you might be wondering how fragile these are. Well, they're sturdy, but it doesn't feel to me like they're going to snap. 
But here's the true test. Will it take the Derwent pastel pencil, which is a very thick pencil? Well, it's going in. It's a little tight. I'm going to put it in until it stops. Okay, it's reached where it needs to go. Wow, these are notoriously difficult to sharpen, so that is amazing. I'm very impressed with that. Now, for the purposes of trying something different, I'm going to try that knob on the other side, which doesn't give it quite as sharp a point, and I'm now putting in my HB, just regular graphite pencil. Not quite as sharp of a point, but that's okay if you don't really need to use sharp points all the time and you're worried about worrying about them snapping off. Now, they say on their website that the Conte Apari pastel pencils can be sharpened in here. This is a very thick one. It's having a little bit of difficulty. I don't think it's going to fit and I don't want to I don't want to ruin that. Let's give it one more go. Oh, that's no, no, I'm not I'm not going to force that in, so I'm going to say that that's, that's poss probably a no. So the best way to sharpen these is with a razor, a, a razor blade or a, um, an X-Acto knife. So now I'm trying the Stabilo Carbothello Pastel Pencil. And if you're worried about this eating your pencils, well, you're not going to have to sharpen that for a very long time. Now I'm going to try another brand of pastel pencil. I'm going to go back to the sharper point. Just moving that dial back to the left. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, that feels really sturdy and strong. So the last pencil is going to be this little short nubbin of the General's 558 pencil. It's a charcoal pencil. And it's disappearing inside. I can't see it. And now you apparently go back in an anti-clockwise, but it's not coming out. So that means I'm going to go in there and see if I can get it out somehow. And I don't see how without taking this off how you are supposed to get that out so it's in there and I'm just pushing it through but it's not ideal mind you it is very sharp so I would say not good for those Conte Apoi pencils and not good for really short pencils but wow, look at the rest of all of those points. We have one that's more blunt on the end and the rest of them are super sharp. So I would say that this is a winner. And I think what I might do 
is do a further review down the line after it's held up for a couple of months. But for now, um, I'm very happy with this sharpener and I would probably recommend it. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please give me a thumbs up, make a comment, hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell and I'll see you in the next art video.